which might have sort of short cut half on that percent. I'm really, well, I've, I do wear an imposter syndrome hat and think, why, why was I invited to come and talk about making when I'm not a maker? Um, but then I actually disabuse myself that notion and that I have two shipping containers which kind of are product together. So, um, so the question around making or individuals or collective really concerns me forget all the time and it comes from a really, really idealistic starting point, Playful Anywhere, which is my small not-for-profit. Um, I kind of came back because I feel like the world's a better place if people make and don't, you know, have alternatives to just purely consuming and not just in terms of um, making with their hands but actually make and share and so much of my experience following that kind of line of inquiry shows me that when you create spaces for people to come together socially, physical transformation can happen both in the therapeutic and in a sense of well-being and sense of flourishing and achievement. Um, so I suppose that's what guides, is a sort of guiding mission for what Playful's about. And if you can create playful environments, people may actually uh, sort of let go of some of their preconceptions about I'm not a creative, or I'm not an artist, or I'm not cultural, or I'm not this. So um, generally speaking, I would put myself in the side of that outside of the room stuff that you talked about earlier, Kathy. Um, or, you know, that sense of like, I'm actually an outsider to most communities, I would say. I would say, just go, well, what's going on over there then? Really curious. So, the maker community absolutely is throughout my entire think about all the years I've ever been curious and an art foundation course. It was going around everybody else's studios. It wasn't really about my own practice ever. It was like, what are you up to? And so, that storytelling thing, being able to cross fertilize and say, I've met really interesting people doing Did you know that they're doing that over there? And we so really try to put people up all together. So um, that sounds really sort of philosophical, and it is, because it will kind of help explain pretty much how, why I get out of bed every morning. Um, so how does this manifest itself? Uh, probably about well, 10 years ago, I set up a, a blog, because I just thought, there's loads of good stuff happening in our city of Leeds. Not everybody knows about it. We've got the Open North, the restaurants, the playhouse, all sorts of things like that. Um, but actually, the little things that happen, people aren't really paying attention to or don't know always really keen to equalise things and kind of go, well, why isn't the Marvellous Tea Dance on the same page as Opera North and They're My Funny Valentine? So what can we do to create those kind of spaces together? So without really ever intending to, we created a community of people who um, didn't have much visibility and very soon wanted me to post loads and loads of content, which I just didn't have time for. So the production of all those books started to become a necessity to find other people. So that whole thing of going from individual me to going actually as a community of people with a shared sense of endeavour and ethos. Uh, after a while though, I um, kind of felt like we were doing a lot of talking, not enough doing. So Playful Anywhere came out of that, which was how can we be more playful? Um, and we did lots of events which asked about our city. So at the heart of it, it's about what makes the place interesting, what can we do right where we live, right where we work. And one of the big events which got me into, I suppose, the understanding of a maker community and how I've met people like Jenna and Adrian and Catherine, Dominic, um, and others in this room, was from the thing of March of the Robots, which was a notion that our city could actually make 10,000 robots from cardboard to code. <laughs> and just even saying 10,000 robots kind of caught lots of people's attention, and most people thought it was absolutely mad. And some people really kind of went, uh, are you on? Why are you doing this? This was four years ago. And other people went, well, we're up for that. And actually got to about 7,000 robots uh, made from cardboard code and chocolate and everything in between. And we did create an amazing sense of possibility and community and storytelling and all sorts of things which made us look slightly differently at what was possible in our city. Still a lot of people were like, well, why, why is this interesting? Why are you making robots? What's the notion of... Uh, digital or physical, or where's the future of our kind of um, ability as people to think about the future? So, we're going to allow us to ask those kind of questions. And a few days on Twitter, I met people like Gemma, who um, is in the audience, and I hope Gemma will pick on you. <laughs> um, and we met individual artists who, and practitioners who very much care about participation. So, I suppose the bit that really interests me in all this is how we create bridges between people who've got amazing talents and skills and maybe not a lot of visibility, and people who are really susceptible to participating in something, who really want to go at things. And that's really where we start, at a very, very informal education kind of level, which is by creating environments where people feel that um, they're not going to be judged, they don't have to be brilliant, 
they may actually kind of just have a go at something. So they might come in because they don't recognise Lego, uh, or they see our shipping containers and go, what was that? Where's that come from? Why is that at the end of our street? Um, we very much believe in going to where people are rather than expecting them to come to us. We're not um, in that physical location. So the ethos is always go, let's go to a car park, let's go to the library, swimming pool, wherever. Um, and so really through that process what you see is a lot of people just start to go, oh I can show you how to do that. So you know, being a little bit incompetent is really useful because as soon as you reach the edge of your incompetence level, people have to step in and take over because they feel sorry for you. But that's actually become quite a manipulative thing that I do all the time now, which is go, should we do this? And then people are like, you just don't know what you're doing, do you? And I'm like, no. And that's when the community starts to build. So in terms of answering the question about collectives and individuals, I do also agree it's really hard to um, separate out what it actually is by saying, we don't have to have these labels. We don't have to be a craftsperson or a maker or a whatever. I think we can be all those things. So we can both be part of the crowd, we can do our things in our own offices and sheds and lofts and stuff. But actually, if we want to, online and offline, we're able to find our clients, let's say. And I think there's a great job for um, people like me who don't sit there actually making a thing all the time and crafting everything beautifully, to be an interpreter or a bridge to people who are susceptible to that. So. I don't really know if that answers the question particularly, but I actually have the belief that we can all be creative and it shouldn't have to be I'm an artist or I'm a creator. Okay, thank you.